factoring trinomials where the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1. Oh, I forgot to put my little wiggly line under here for you. Make it pretty. Okay, so let's get going on this one. When the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1, and when you cannot factor it out, in other words, the coefficient is not a common factor, and you did see some of those in the last homework example. So now we're stuck. So let's take a look at this one here. We're going to finish our little poem, and you're going to be so happy I showed you this technique. So we can't take a 3 out of 11 and a 4, so it's stuck there. Now I'm looking for the product of the first and the last and the sum of the one in the middle. So that's why I was saying that before, that you have to do this times this. So let's write above here again. This is my first term, this is my last, and this is my middle term. Okay, so I'm going to show you a technique that maybe your teacher taught you, or maybe it's the one that was in your textbook but it is not the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to show you both just in case you kind of say, well, that's not the, what the book said. So Miss Havrot has a better technique and you will like it. Okay, so we're going to do product sum. Product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. So what's the first here and what's the last? So this time we have three times minus four is minus 12. So a product of minus 12 and a sum of 11. So I'm going to write those numbers out over here. These two numbers give me negative 12. And don't think that you're, you're just too smart to write these things out because sometimes you'll make a silly mistake and you'll be mad at yourself for not spending two seconds to write these out. So what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 11? Well, you probably are thinking 12 and negative 1. And you would be right. Okay, so... In the world of something called decomposition, and I'm going to write that in, in a green color here. So this is going to be decomposition. Decomposition. This is the hard way. Okay. So, whoops. And in decomposition, what you have to do is you leave this and you replace this term, 11x, by plus 12 minus 1. So I'm going to do plus 12x minus 1x minus 4. And then you're going to do that factor by grouping that we talked about in um, common factoring. So you would take out of these first two terms, you take out a 3x and you're left with an x plus 4. And out of these terms here, I want to make an x plus 4 here. So if I take out a minus 1, you might even want to put the 1 there so you don't forget about it then I would have an x plus 4. And that gives me 3x minus 1 in brackets times x plus 4. Okay, so that's what I would call the long and difficult way. Now watch, I'm going to show you Ms. Havrat's easy way to factor. So you do the same, you start the same way. You always have to do this, even if you do composition. So you do the product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle, Find the two numbers that match the above. Take your time. Continue to fiddle. Now the next part of this is where the magic happens. So you forget about these two numbers now and you have these 12 and minus 1. You make two fractions with the first on the bottom. What's the first? The first is 3. So I put 3 on the bottom. Now what you want to do now is reduce these fractions if you can. This one I can't reduce. It's minus 1 over 3. It's minus 1 over 3. But this one I can reduce because 3 goes into 12 four times. So it gives me 4 over 1. Now you have to have something in the denominator. Okay, so make two fractions. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. We have the first on the bottom. So in this case, the first is a 3. On the bottom, reduce. So reduce the fractions. Reduce, and then you can stop. Now here's the fun part. The answer is there. 
is there before your eyes. The X on the bottom, the other on top. Oops, R. Okay, so watch this. Look, here's my answer. 1X plus 4, 3X minus 1. Bingo! See that? It's magic, I swear. So you can do, you can go right from here directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200, and write out your factors. 3x minus 1, so I put an x on the bottom, the other on top, and I get my factors. 3x minus 1, 3x minus 1, times x plus 4, and I'm done. Saves all this decomposition work. Okay, let's do a number of these so you've got it all figured out, no problem. Okay, let's try this one. So I have 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Okay, here we go. Product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. Find the two numbers that match the above. Take your time, continue to fiddle. Okay, so I want a product of minus 10. So I'm going to write that out here. Minus 10. Sum has to be 3. Okay, what multiplies to minus 10 and adds to positive 3? So... Hopefully you stopped the video and figured that out on your own. And you know that 5 and 2 would make 10, but I want the 3, positive 3. So that means the 2 has to be negative. Okay, and the first thing I should have said was, can I factor this 2 out? The answer is no. Okay, so then we know we have to use this little bit more complicated step at the end. Okay, so I have my two special numbers, and I'm going to make two fractions... So I write 5 and minus 2. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. What is the first? First is a 2. With the first on the bottom. So I put these over 2. Reduce and then you can stop. I can't reduce this one. That's it. 5 over 2. This one can be minus 1 over 1. Right? Okay. Reduce. So you have to reduce. The answer is there before your eyes, the X on the bottom, the other on top. So this is going to give me 2X plus 5. Watch how magical this is. 2X plus 5 and an X minus 1. No decomposition needed. No more than two lines. A little fraction work over here and you've got it now. Double check. 2X squared minus 2X plus 5X is 3 and 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. Okay, so now that you're smiling, because you're saying, oh, this is really easy. Ms. Havra is a genius. No, I'm not. I've just taught math for a long time. Okay, let's try another one. 12x squared minus 16x plus 5. Okay, what is my product? Product of the first and the last. What's 12 times 5? 60. Ooh, sounds like a big number. Sum of the one in the middle. The sum is minus 16. Now, if you get really, really big numbers here, you might want to check if you missed a common factor first. But this is this is big. Okay, so we've got something times something equals 60. Those same two numbers have to add up to negative 16. Okay, so what multiplies to 60? So if you're really stuck, you can start by taking 60 and figuring out numbers that multiply to 60. So you'd say one and 60. Can I make a 16 out of a one and a 60? No. Two times 30. Oh, two times 30, I could make 32 or 28, but that's not 16. Three times 20, oh, I'm getting closer. Three times 20 is 60, but three and 20, I could make a 17 or a 23. One more, um, four times 15. 4 times 15, that's not going to help. 4 times 15 is 70. What am I doing? Where did that number come from? Must have been another question. Okay, so what makes 60 here? So I got up to, what did I do? 3, uh, three and 20, 4 and 15, 5 and, not 4 and 15, 5 and 15, 6 and 10. Oh, bingo, finally, 6 and 10. 6 times 10 will give me 60. But I want it to be 
um, a sum of negative but a product that's positive that means both numbers have to be negative and there we go okay so I found my two numbers now make two fractions remember you're going to use these pink numbers here and you're going to write them out once so I have minus 6 and 10 make two fractions with the first on the bottom what's the first number here first number back over here 12 I put a 12 on the bottom now look there's lots of reducing that has to be done here right 6 over minus 6 over 12 is the same as minus 1 over 2 and 10 over 12 they both divided by 2 so that's 5 over 6 so make two fractions with the first on the bottom reduce that's here and then you can stop the answer is there before your eyes, the x on the bottom, the other on top, 2x minus 1. So I'm going to put that over here now. I've got my brackets, 2x minus 1 and 6x plus 5. Okay, look, 2x times 6x, 12x squared plus, whoops, I forgot a negative somewhere. It should have been a negative 10. I knew right away when I went to check it, didn't I, because I would have had not this should have been a negative 10 and a negative 5 okay so this is minus 5x okay now we check it again 2x times 12 is 12x squared minus 10 minus 6 more is minus 16 and a negative times a negative is a positive okay so that's another one another one bites the dust let's go to um what was that one 12x squared let's try this one okay now this is where you're going to say, whoa, 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 what did she do? So sometimes your trinomials have two variables in them. It could be x, y's. In this case, I'm doing n's and y's. And this is where students say, oh, how do you do this one? Okay, so I'm going to tell you what you want to do is forget about the second variable for a second. Just factor it like you would do anything else. So I want to know what is the product. The product of the first and the last. We're only looking at the coefficients here. So 6 times minus 10 is minus 60. The sum of the one in the middle. So the sum is going to be minus 11. Okay, what multiplies to minus 60 and adds to minus 11? Okay, so... Let's do some little calculation here. Equals 60 minus 11. So one's positive, one's negative. And I think from the last one, we said 15 times 4 was 60. So I'm going to put a 15 and a 4 here, and I'm going to decide which signs should be where. I know one of them is negative. I want the sum to be negative, so that means the larger number has to be the negative here. Now see if I was in a classroom the students would be saying miss miss you forgot the negative. So we have a negative 15 and a positive 4. Negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. Negative 15 times 4 is negative 60. Now remember the next step. Make two fractions. So I take these two numbers minus 15 and 4. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. Where is the first number? Right here. 6. Put that on the denominator. I'm going to reduce. So minus 15 over 6, they both divide by 3. So I've got minus 5 over 2. And this one, 4 over 6, they both divide by 2. That gives me 2 over 3. I'll just let me put a line down here so you know I'm going from here. Okay, so now I've reduced them. And I can't reduce them anymore, so I'm going to put a little box over it because I like to and make two fractions with the first on the bottom reduce and then you can stop the answer is there before your eyes oh not an x here though we had n as our first variable the n on the bottom the other on top hmm so what if i just put a y here i put a y there that's all i'm going to need to do to make this expand properly. Watch, let's put it in here. So we had 2n minus 5y. And I have 3n plus 2y. 
Okay, let's take a look. Did that work? Of course it did, or I wouldn't have done it. 2n times 3n is 6n squared. 2n times 2y is 4ny. Then minus 15ny, so that gives me minus 11. And minus 5y times plus 2y is minus 10y squared. Okay, so don't get all freaked out because you've got two variables in the equation. You just have to put, like I said, just kind of forget about this one. You're working with the numbers and you just slap those variables in at the end and you're very happy. Okay, the last one I want to do for you involves, well, let me see if you can guess what it involves. Maybe you want to stop and see if you can do this one on your own. See, 6x squared plus 34x minus 12. Okay, maybe stop the video and come back. Guess what? What do you have to do first? And this, again, I said this before, always look for, look for a common factor. And there is a common factor here. I like it when people make little eyeballs out of the loose, don't you? I think it's funny. Okay, so there is a common factor here. And what can I take out of every term? They're all even. So that means I can pull out a 2. And that's what I'm going to do to start. 2. 3x squared plus 17x minus 6. Okay, now remember what I said before. You have to keep this 2 in your solution or else this will not be equal to it. Like if I took this two out, you couldn't say that six X squared is equal to three X squared. Leave it there. Okay, and I know this is going to factor to two sets of brackets. So I'm just going to put them there for now. Okay, product sum, product of the first and the last. Now, you're not going to use these numbers. You're going to use these two because you're factoring. This is what you're factoring now, right? What, you, what you've got left here. This is what you're factoring. So I'm looking for a product of minus 18 and a sum of 17. Okay, so what multiplies to negative 18? Well, you can tell they're only one number apart. So it's got to be something side by side. It's either 18. Let's see here. Let me write it up. I can't write and talk sometimes at the same time because I'm old. Okay, 17. Okay, so the product is negative, but the sum is positive. So that means the larger number has to be positive. So 18 times negative one is negative 18, and 18 minus one is 17. So I found those two magic numbers. Now remember what you do with them. You write them out again, 18 minus one. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. The first is this three right here. Reduce and then you can stop. This one is reduced. This one, three goes into 18 six times. So it's six over one. You need a denominator because that's where you're gonna put your X. So the X on the bottom, the other on top. I have a little poem somewhere. I've got it typed up. Maybe I can put that in the link for you. Okay, so here's my answer. X plus six, three X minus one. So watch. X plus 6, 3x minus 1, and x times 3x is 3x squared, minus 1x plus 18 gives me 17, and 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. Take the two seconds it takes you to check your answer, because, I mean, it's got to work, right? If it doesn't work, you've made a mistake with your reduction of your fraction, or maybe you didn't find the proper numbers here that really did add up to 17 and product of minus 18. Okay, so that's your lesson on, on um, coefficients, factoring trinomials where the coefficient is not one. And the homework is on, and I didn't write that on here, I'll write it right here. So homework is going to be in that math power book again, and it's on page um, 163. Oh, I know, I want to do one more thing for you, and that is what happens, um, well, let's just write one out here just before I go. So page 163 is where you're going to find all these questions to practice. So let's say I had this one. 
because the questions in the textbook say factor if possible. So if I looked at this question here, I'd say I'm looking for a product of the first and the last, so that's minus 10, and a sum of two. So I think you can see pretty quickly that there are no two numbers that will multiply to negative 10 and add to two. Negative 10, so you have 10 and one or two and five, right? And I can't make a two out of a two and a five. I can make a three, but I can't make a two. So this is not factorable. Now, most of the time, your teacher, well, maybe your teacher will put one something like that on a test to see if you will say, but it should say in the question, factor if possible, and that one is not possible. Okay, so if you run into one and you, you know, don't spend more than 20 minutes trying to figure out product sum and then say, well, I wonder I couldn't do it. It wasn't factorable. So in the textbook, they also have the solutions in the back so you can find out which ones are not factorable very quickly. Hope that helps you. All the best. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe and keep on top of your math.